Hello, what's happening? It's John here for another A50 tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be creating a neon sign. So we're going to make this in 3D, then we're going to take this across to Unreal, and we're going to build it all in there. The first thing you're probably wondering is, why am I in Photoshop? And that's a good question. So I've created myself a canvas, 1024 by 1024, just so you know. And what I'm going to be doing is creating a vector path. So, it, as you can see, at the moment, if I click my pen tool, this is going to be my path tool. So just make sure at the top, you set to path and not shape. And this is where we create our shape. Arguably, you could do this in your 3D software. This is just sort of the equivalent of using splines. The difference is, however, I'm a lot more comfortable with Photoshop than I am with 3D, not just because of how much I use it, and personally, I think the spline editor in 3D is not as good as, say, the pen editor, the pen tool. So what I've done is I've very quickly created my shape, which is going to be a crown. And again, this is the reason why I prefer doing this in Photoshop, because it's a lot quicker and easier to sort of edit these. There's no right clicking and changing types. I'm just making use of my shortcuts, which is Alt, holding Alt, hover over an, a point, and it changes to sort of an upside down V, as you can see here. Holding Control will move a point around, and we've even got, if we just left click, we can just delete point as well. So I'm just loosely trying to do this quite quickly. Alright, there we go, that's my neon sign, it's going to be my crown, and I've got that set up, and it's looking alright, it's looking quite good. So what we're going to do next, is we're going to do a different type of export to what we're probably usually used to doing, and that's go to File, Export, and Path to Illustrator. What that means is, if we go over here on the right side and look at a path, we've got this work path, and that's the one that we've just created, this is the one that we're going to want to save we're not going to take it across to Illustrator, we're going to take it across to our 3D software of choice. In my case, I'm going to be using Max to do this, 3ds Max, but you can do it in anything. So, export your path to Illustrator. So, once you've exported that, we're going to move across into Max, or like I say, the 3D software of your choice. I'm going to go File, Import, and Fine, replace new, single, that's cool. And if I Alt W to make this thing, there is my spline. I like to say I could have created this in here, but I think it's useful every now and then as well to actually, you know, use different tools. Ooh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scale the whole thing up a whole bunch. Maybe not that much of a whole bunch. That should do. Rotate this. I find it doesn't really work as well if you don't stand it up. So there we go. That's 90. And let's just position it real quick. Yeah, that was quite good. And so our base shape that we're going to use for our 3D objects is going to be a cylinder because typically, as you would expect, Neon signs tend to work with cylinders. 
So I'm just creating my cylinder real fast. And what I want to do is sort of position this so it starts at one end of my unclosed spline. About there, that should do it. Scale you down a little bit. And that's looking pretty cool. So when I right click, convert to editable poly, select the face, and now I'm ready to extrude this along my spline to create my shape. So we do this by going across and finding the option extrude along spline. I'm going to press the settings tab. Down here, I'm going to choose which spline I'd like to create across. And there we go, it's created along my spline. Apart from, it looks awful. So, in this top left, I'm just going to roll this number up a whole bunch. Until it's sort of as curvilicious as I would like it to be. Maybe, I might just say to 100. Cool. There we go, that looks pretty nice. And at this point as well, it's worth having a quick look around, just make sure everything looks good, everything sort of matches, and it's not a flat object. Because I've seen a couple of issues where this doesn't always work, and that's usually along to do with this button. So if you press that button, it tends to change the shape a little bit, or it'll move where it's done. But just make sure that everything looks good. I'm going to hit tick. And there we go, we've got our 3D object, and we're about ready. There's just one more thing we need to do. I'm going to press M. Material Editor. I'm going to work in Compact Material Editor because it's nicer. Just going to set any old colour. Doesn't really matter which colour. I'm going to go for this, sort of, this colour and drag and drop that on there. And the reason I've done that is because just so when I take this cross into Unreal Engine, that we've got a material of, and we've got you know we can put a new material on there. Cool. So we're pretty much done here. We just need to export this. I'm going to export this as an OBJ, and that's easy. We just press on file, go down to export, and choose your file type, which in my case is going to be OBJ. So, there you go. Thanks for watching this part. I will see you in the next part where we take all this into Unreal and see how that's all going to work. Thanks, guys.